Do you ever feel stuck like you're living your life on autopilot? Are you ready to shift into high gear and reach the success you so richly deserve? Welcome to the Play Big Movement podcast. I am your host, Sharon Lecter, entrepreneur, business strategist, and best-selling author. Playing big is not about settling for good enough or being comfortable. It is about reaching your highest potential and achieving your greatest success. Join me in my Play Big Movement as I interview top experts in business, money, and entrepreneurship, all ready to serve you and to help you play big, be number one in your field, live your legacy, and create maximum impact. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to this segment of the Play Big Movement podcast. And I'm very excited today because I have a dear friend and we actually chatted a little bit yesterday and I realized it's been well over 20 years and um, we haven't talked much in the last couple of years. So we had a chance to catch up a little yesterday. Um, John Burley, thank you so much for being with me today, John. My extreme pleasure, Sharon. Yeah, I'm really <laughs> excited about your movement. Well, just to give you a little background, I met John back at the very early days of Rich Dad. And um, I've got a written resume, but I'm going to actually talk about it from a personal perspective because he is a true, true real estate investor. Now, there's a lot of people out there teaching real estate investing, but his number one focus is real estate investing. And in his resume, he talks about that. But his number one focus from a personal perspective is being a great husband and a great father. And uh, I've seen his kids grow up and they've become incredible young adults. And um, John has always, one of the things that you and I have in common, I'm going to bring up a little bit later, is he's never been focused on being a celebrity. He's been focused on building a strong, viable business. And he's been into the money side of things for a long time, but also focused on building a real estate empire. And, and when we talk about Play Big, it's not just doing the deals, but creating the systems to make the deal so that it can be repeatable. And once you built the systems, then teaching others how to do it. And it's not just a, a, a course to teach it, but to actually, he has, calls it a boot camp where it actually helps people do it in process and, and mentoring them through it. And so, John, I really want to applaud you because, you know, there's a lot of people out there teaching things that they don't really do themselves. And um, of, of all the people I know, you definitely walk the talk. So thanks for being with us today. Thank you, Sharon. Kind words. Appreciate it. <laughs> so talk a little bit about early, John, because you were a Wall Street guy and um, ended up, talk about that transition. How did you get into real estate initially? Yeah, I actually, I started selling door-to-door -door when when I was six years old and uh, did door to door sales most of my young life, uh, you know, and sold all kinds of things fruit and brushes and vacuum cleaners and insulation. And um, really always wanted to do the real estate. I remember being a little kid, my favorite games were Monopoly and playing bank um, and kind of denied it. So I did the, the real estate a little bit part time. I got into the financial planning because it was the one in that era, one of the great sales jobs where they actually, the more you produce, the more you got paid. Uh, my very short stint in corporate sales, I uh, set some amazing records and I was rewarded by having my cut three times uh, because I made too much money. I remember one meeting where they're going like, do you think it's right that you make more than the managers? And it's like, yes. <laughs> and, and, and it's like, and don't you all make a percentage off of me? What, what is the problem? And so I learned a lot, of, a lot of foundational things, a lot of roots, learned a lot about who I was and who I wasn't. Um, I'm definitely not a very good employee, so I don't do that. Uh, the financial side really gave me a, a, a numbers background and an understanding. There's, there's good and bad in the quote unquote Wall Street financial planning world, I think like any business, uh, but they really understood how to monetize. Uh, they understood how to make money for them really, really well. Um, and then there was just a small percentage, just about two percentage, two percent of works in what's called private equity. Um, and I'm talking about the ones that really work where it's foundationally, almost all of the earnings are based off of performance. Uh, most of them don't even have trail fees. There's an entrance fee to get in. And after that, if they make money, they get a big chunk of it. If they lose money, they share in paper on the losses and cash out they share. And so the, the onus really is to stop the normal adversarial. It's like in real estate, it's an adversarial relationship for most people. Property manager's dream would be you buy a rental house, they rent it out, three months later, the tenant trashes the house, moves out, 
and they have to go to court because then there's all sorts of things they can do to generate fees. Where you as the investor, your dream would be, hey, the people move in, pay above market rent, and stay for 10 years. And so what I learned from that primarily was two things. First of all, how to raise money to take the, the cap and the limitations off of real estate investing. Because to me, real estate investing is about money, not about real estate. It's not that hard to find a good deal if you have money. The problem is for most people, they have money for a few deals or no deals, and then they're done. Um, and then they're trying to do the really creative things, which do work. It's just you can't do them every day all the time, and they don't all you might want to do. So what we do is we strive to follow that model. We don't charge any fees at all. It's all based on how I think it should be is a non-adversarial relationship. Our job is to make our clients as much money as we possibly can. And by doing that, we make ourselves a much larger share than just fees. And it just gets everybody aligned. And when we do the education, which is, you know, Sharon, I don't, I don't travel the world anymore like the old days. I don't run around the country doing an event every weekend. Um, it's just not what I want to do. Uh, is we just teach our model. Uh, and I think the the couple things that are very unique about what we teach, although they don't sound unique, but as you know, in the business they are, is first of all, we understand that real estate investing is not foremost about real estate at all. It, real estate is just the asset class I use because it's my favorite. Um, what we teach is that, first of all, it's entirely about money and understanding money, understanding how returns are generated, understanding that what most people look at usually is wrong, which should make sense because most people don't end up rich. So obviously you don't want to do what they do. Uh, and then the other thing is that I always looked at this because of my background and training is this was a business. And most people that I see go into real estate or, or quite frankly, any investment, including being in businesses, is they don't really get that it's a business they're running. I mean, they think real estate investing is, is investing and it's not. If you want to invest, Call a guy like me and have a place your money. Go buy a REIT or a mutual fund. That's investing. But if you own just one rental property, you have a, and unfortunately for most people who you just hired is your effective CEO of your company is a property manager who in most cases became a property manager because they failed utterly and totally at sales. Um, <laughs> and that's who's in charge of your company. It's a bad model. It's and so, so true. we just do, <laughs> yeah, we just do it how it should be. I mean, there's a reason why there's all those nightmares about, property managers no offense to the great ones there are some that i know but for most they became a property manager because they needed something to generate some income because they couldn't make any sales and so what we just do is is we look at the model very very differently we look at it as a business um i actually went out about 20 years ahead of my brethren from wall street most of them started the funds and the institutional people in 9 10 11 they started buying residential single family home estate and we actually started doing it in 1989. We all knew that the single family made a higher rate of return than the uh, commercial and the, the multi-units. I mean, it, it's just simple math. I mean, anybody who looks at it, you can deny it all day long, but I mean, you know, they're in a place like Phoenix right now, they're fighting for five and a half, six percent, five percent rates of return, and we don't buy a deal that doesn't make 25. So it's just a completely different model. There was a lot of systems and a lot of work, and fortunately for my investors and for my students is I figured that crud out about 25 years ago. Uh, but it did take us a few years to really learn the systems. I remember going to property management courses, and it's like, okay, so what you're really teaching me to do here is you're teaching me how to screw the investor out of money wherever I can. <laughs> Uh, the problem is that I'm the investor, so you're teaching me how to nickel and dime and gouge me. Because people think property management is like to 10%, and it's not. It's about 35. Um, it's about 25% for all the costs and about 8 to 10% for property management. So it's really a 35% cost. And internally, we hold ours right at 18%. Um, and people go, well, why? It's like, well, because I manage it as if I'm the owner because I am. Uh, because half of all those properties that I have with an investment partner are mine, so I have to really, truly lower cost, raise income streams. So you made, you made a couple of comments that I want, I want to highlight because um, I want to underline them with triple lines, and that is, you know, real estate investing is a business. When I talk about asset classes, I'm investing in real estate. You are, you are in the real estate business, and whether you own one property or 20, you need to handle it as a business. And part of what John offers and what he does is the system. So you made that comment as well. The systems on how to do it, you know, it's kind of a rinse and repeat. And once you figure out how to do it and you do it well, 
And that's where it's important to, to realize if you want to play big, you need to have the ability to scale and you scale through systems. And John, I know Absolutely. over the years, we're talking about 35 years of this, certainly the last 25 years in a big way, your system changes based on what's happening in the industry, but the basic underlying model stays the same, right? Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, our end result has always been the same. Um, so we're not a month investment company. You know, uh, so like the last several years, everybody's been flipping. So you could be pretty confident that that is not what we do. When everybody's doing it, you bring in what we call amateur hour, people who don't know what they're doing. The numbers get inflated. There's a lot of hurt go way, way down. I, I think, um, you know, one of the person I admire most is, is Warren Buffett. And I can remember in the early 90s, a, a mutual friend of ours, ours encouraged me to buy one share back when he only had the class A shares because he, he didn't. Oh, it wasn't open to the media back then. You couldn't uh, get a copy of it. It was literally, you know, you spent, I think it was like, I don't remember what it was, 180, 190,000. It was crazy for one share, basically to buy the newsletter. Mm -hmm. uh, and he's just always been a contrarian and always looked at everything in a business model, not at the industry, always looked at extraordinary long holding period. I mean, right now, and, and we do a, a volume business because the, the second phase was, Make it, make it a business, have the systems, and the other thing is that take the shackles off. So I, I understand my brethren in real estate investing. For most of them, you know, it's two deals, five, it's 10. At some point, the bank says no more and or they're out of down payment monies. Uh, and they're stuck. They're looking for creative financing deals, which absolutely work. However, you can't do big volume like we, we like to do. You can't buy thousands of properties in that manner, in a realistic manner. And so we took the shackles off by bringing in all the money we needed. I mean, we've raised a little over $600 million over the years, which gave us the ability to buy a massive portfolio, really test the systems, really put them into effect, and then just to create massive, massive cash flow. And you know, on a, uh, people go, what do we do? On, on a simple single family home here in Arizona, which is just a little under 200,000, would be a, a class B investment grade house. Um, right now, we make $220,000 on a 10-year period, um, which is a, a lot of return, and very much of it, it's not fully autopilot, but very much of it is very systematized to have very little work involved on the ongoing basis. So we don't want to flip a property and make 10 or 20 or 30 or even 50000 We We do occasionally, but it's just because it doesn't fit our model. We're looking for the specific asset that fits right into our model. We don't deviate. Uh, I was having a conversation earlier today. People were like, oh, well, you got to have multiple streams of income. You got to diversify. And I was like, okay, can you name one person that you've ever met that got rich, diversified, or doing multiple streams? And he's like, oh, well, everybody does. And I go, no, no, I asked you to name one because you and I know that's not how people got rich. We, you pick a niche. Many of my clients, <laughs> yeah, they, they pick a niche. They do it extremely well. Many of my clients diversify into real estate today who are rich with someone like me. And the reason they do it is today they have more time, they have more money rather than time. And so the time's more valuable, so they'll give me the money to place it for them and do it for them. They don't have to do the work. But they don't have, you know, seven streams of income that made them rich. They may have more streams today, but it's not how they got rich. They had one basket, they watched it really, really well, and they made it grow. And that's something, you know, one of, we, a couple of weeks ago, I, I did a podcast on making sure that you, you you pick a pick a lane stay in that lane become an expert in that lane and build your expertise become the authority and certainly John you've become the authority in, in this and um, the importance of cash flow I can't underline enough anybody that's listened to me or study anything I do it is you know the, the valuation of the asset may go up and down but if you buy it right and you've got that monthly cash flow how many properties can you get if you've got a positive cash flow as many as you can find right and um, yeah man, you man, know it's man. something that we literally when we, when we yeah you're so right Jeremy. when we look at the factors around uh, the acquisition of a piece of property almost always and for people who, who don't understand what the game really is, they don't get this, and there'll be some people listening to going like, oh, that's crazy. Almost always the least important factor of our acquisition is the price of the property. It's the least important. I'm looking at what we call the spread. I'm looking at the difference between my debt service, which would be the loan, property taxes, insurance, all the true maintenance costs, and then my income. And I'm looking to make that spread as large as possible uh, and then that's, you know, it's a simple equation based on the ratio based on my entry. 
how much money I, I have to put in. Because obviously, if you buy a house for a hundred thousand dollars, use a simple number. Although some of my investors certainly do, most aren't buying it for a hundred thousand cash. Most are putting in today's world twenty or twenty-five percent down. They're financing the difference, and so we're looking at the spread, which gets us our rate of income. And so, you know, we're in an area where we've had extremely low interest rates. I know some people without a historical perspective, oh, well, John, interest rates have gone up. Yeah, and they've gone up to what is still just about the lowest rate you've ever seen in your life. <laughs> That's right. That's I, right. <laughs> I, I cut my teeth in this business. FHA loans were 19% when I started. Yes. yes. Um, it, from 81 to 93, it was an excess of 10%. I remember we still drank back then. I remember in 1993 when the rates dropped to nine and three quarters. Sherry and I popped two balls of Dom Perignon that night because yes. I had never in my investment career seen sub 10%. Yeah. Uh, I grew up in an era where it is like you know, kind of a condescending manner. Well, it wasn't kind of, it was very condescending. One of my original mentors, he was like, you know, boy, if you can't make money at 10%, go get a job at a grocery store. That's right. Uh, and, he did, <laughs> and he meant it in a very insulting way, meaning you're so worthless and pathetic at 10%, you can't make money. And unfortunately, you know what, just a few years ago, we saw a generation of real estate investors go bankrupt at six and 7%. Um, so it, it's just understanding, you know, we've got record low interest rates. We've got rents that, and no matter what dynamic you put in for cost of living, no matter, you know, the time value of money, it really doesn't matter. We've got rents in most places that are at, at so far beyond historic levels, and there's room for them to continue to grow. Uh, I was at a meeting last night, you know, we're in Phoenix, just consistently 6% annual growth on the rents, which, you know, almost 6%, that's not a big a deal. That's a 6% increase of a leveraged position on your money that you're able to pass on annually over and over and over again. Um, now, most landlords don't raise their managers don't raise rents because they're afraid the tenant will move. It'll be extra work. We raise the rents annually. We do it. Uh, we have so many properties. We do it in in, in two uh, drops where we, two trenches where half the rent increases one month and then half of them six months later. But we raise rents every year because it just massively increases the income. And when I look at numbers in real estate, I look at everything on a 10 year timeline. So for example, most people are like, well, it's only a hundred dollars a month rent increase. It's not that much. I'm like, well, wait, it's a hundred times 12. That's $1,200 times 10 years. That's $12,000. That's a lot of money. I want to also underline what you just said, the buy, the 10 year timeline that so we're talking about a buy and hold strategy. So yeah, you got to do a lot of work up front, but then you're doing it for a long term period of revenue and that revenue continues to grow. Right. Yeah, absolutely. We, we um, you know, in our model that we teach, there's uh, an upfront fee that the client pays is the only fee. It's about $10,000 per property um, that gives operation money. Uh, for us today, that just continues the operations. Um, for new students, that gives them eating, you know, living money. You know, you, you do five, six deals your first year, you make fifty, sixty thousand dollars $60,000. The pressure to, to try and flip and force a deal is gone. It's now just buying a good long, you know, when I look at people in this era, uh, when I work with people who are really wealthy, very successful investors, you know, they're there's six primary things that they look at. You know, the first one is, is safety and security. They want the investments to be safe. They don't want to lose money. Uh, and I know you, Mike, and I have had these conversations. It's like the first thing is we don't lose, lose any money. Uh, you know, the next thing that we, we look at is the long term. We're not looking for short term placement at the po highest possible taxes because we have money and we're already at the max rate. We don't want short term stuff. And we are, our time is more valuable than, than the money. We don't want the quick buck. We want to put money in and have it grow for the long term. Yeah, the next one, it's a word that you and I are both very much endeared by is cash flow. The idea that we're going to make things cash flow for decades on everything we do. Um, we maximize tax benefits, which uh, love them or not, and it's a pretty volatile lightning rod these days, so we won't even touch it. <laughs> the new tax reform act that went into effect, uh, that's in effect for this year, is significantly in favor of real estate investment. Mm -hmm. um, set up properly as a business, uh, you know, a $300 property gets $45,000 first year tax deduction. Um, there's a lot of real estate, there's a lot of things that are available. So it's a superb, you know, investment, you know, and then they, the outlook for long-term growth, but it's not the most important thing. And then they just want a good solid, um, to great rate of return. And so that's what we really focus on. Firsty, safe and secure. I think the one thing I, I really learned on the wall street side, but I don't think Sharon, I really, really got it until about 15 years ago is that as the founder and the CEO of a private equity company, 
my job is not number one to be creative, to make these massive rates of return. We do, but that's not my job. My job is to mitigate, reduce, and do everything humanly possible to eliminate risk. And if I do that, I'll get my great rates of return. And, and when you look at the when we talk about mentoring, you, you want a mentor who's going to help you mitigate risk, somebody who's been where you Absolutely. want to go. And that's one of the, the beauties of what, John, you offer to the people that work with you because you've got that incredible depth of experience and you have the opportunity to, you've been, you've probably had everything happen to you with real estate at some point in the time. So you know how to deal with it. You don't, you know, we, I talk about high emotions, low intelligence, but when you've been through it, you can kind of get through it a little easier, right? <laughs> yeah, you, you have a historical but we tell students all the time um, what they think is the biggest disaster of their career to us is like, well, welcome to Tuesday morning. <laughs> uh, and the reason we say welcome to Tuesday morning is for two reasons. First of all, it's routine to us with our portfolio size. And the second thing, Tuesday morning, is Mondays we devote entirely to making it rain, creating income. Um, so Monday, literally, of the exception of two people on my team, on Monday, people aren't allowed to open email and return voicemails and put out other people's little mini fires. Uh, Monday, their job is to, you know, these are the three to five things I do that make the most money for the company. I do those Monday morning. Uh, so, so literally one of my disciplines is, you know, my calls to raise money are done Monday morning every week. Get the monkey off my back before he becomes the 800-pound gorilla. Uh, and then Tuesday, you know, when we take care of all those things, and for us, because of the, systems, the systems and the sheer reputation and the, and the massive volume of deals we've done, you know, Tuesday, it's just not that big a deal. We're, you know, we're not all upset. We don't get emotionally involved. I get asked all the time, John, why don't you do a real estate reality show? And I go, it would be the most boring show in the world. Nobody ever watch it. Uh, <laughs> we buy a property. Things go wrong, all within the parameters that we had planned on. Nobody yells, nobody cries, nobody screams. We don't lose any money. All the problems are fixed within the system, and it goes into the model, and we make money, and then we buy another, and we do the same thing. We buy another. It would be the most boring show in the world, which, as you and, <laughs> and I know. most successful businesses fall into that category because they've created yeah, all of the system, and they're kind of turnkey, and they're running, and they're operating, and they're throwing off cash. Same thing with what you've created with, in real estate. So, John, if somebody wants to connect with you, find out a little bit more about your boot camps, how, how can they find you? Yeah, a couple of ways. They can go to uh, johnburley.com, so J-O-H-N-B-U-R-L-E-Y.com. Uh, they can call our offices at 623-561-8246. Uh, there's also John Burley Real Estate Investing on Facebook with uh, like a discussion forum, a group, and a lot of activity there. And would, would love to, to talk with them, help them out. Sharon, I am so proud of you, um, you know, what you're doing right now. Uh, and playing big, others play big and go to the next level is just amazing. And, and, and sincerely, my friend, I'm happy for you because I know this inspires you, not just others, but you. And it makes you happy. And so I love seeing that. So thank well, you for I love what you you're do on behalf of everybody else. We're going to go into another little session for the insider group of of the play Absolutely. on Facebook. And we're going to go into a little bit more about your own personal habits, because I really want to, as I introduced you, John, and I want to end with this, because you, you really have made a commitment and you live a commitment to your family, family first. And that's, of course, you know, something that's very important to me as well. And we've talked, we talked a little bit about this yesterday, but again, the fact that it's not, you know, I, I teach, are you building a celebrity brand or a mission brand or business and, and um, we talked about that a little bit and you made you made a conscious decision <clears throat> along the way because you were starting to build the celebrity side of John Burley and traveling a lot and you really made a decision to focus on building the business side so speak to that a little bit yeah I mean everything in life is a choice we're, we're not victims I mean we all have stuff happen to us uh, we all got a, a different starting point some of us you and I were blessed with with parents that stayed in long marriages that worked hard to to give things to their children you know we've done the same as parents um, yeah, but, but the reality is we make a choice of what we want and you know I never wanted to be famous I but I always wanted to be rich and so Marcus has been on on building first uh, my relationship with God, you know, then a, a great, great family, and, and then building the business, um, leaving something far better than when I showed up. 
and that's just been the side for me. And then I don't want this to come off wrong towards anybody because it's not intended that way. The reality is if you really know what you're doing, and especially in my medium of, of investments, there is so much phenomenally more money available doing the business than teaching people how to do it. No, no matter what I charge people, it's nothing compared to what I'm going to probably. I mean, all I have to do is do one property. I made $220,000. So it, it's a, a far better model. And so my true passion and my true love, uh, although I love teaching and sharing, it's been running the business and building the business. And we, you know, we wrote the books and we did a lot of audio programs and different to help others and pass that on. But really what we love is just doing the business. Um, it's fun to teach the model. I like doing it part time. But that's all I'm going to do. And, and uh, you never want to say never because I got Shane, Sean Connery on a Bond movie. Uh, never say never again. Um, but I really don't see us ever going out and doing the, the big global national education that we used to do. It, just for where I'm at and what I do, it took away way too much from my family. And it took way, way too much away from my business. And those are the things I'm more passionate about and I love the most. So we well, and, the, and the level of success here. you have gives you more time for the family. And I know you just got back from a great trip um, to Scotland and to see your daughter who was in Oxford for the summer. So, I mean, oh, yeah. to have successful fun. businesses give you, gives you that kind of flexibility. Absolutely. And, and, it, and it, it's long-term staying power, um, you know, Everybody's subject to the market moves. However, if you understand and have historical perspective, which we do, you can see what's coming way before it comes. The, from my point of view, the more volatility in the marketplace, the more I make. I mean, the, the best thing that happened to our company was the, the last crash. I know everybody else went broke. Um, we didn't survive. We thrived and then came out and did the second largest uh, round of acquisitions we'd ever done while prices were low. Um, so it's just, yeah, it, it's knowing what's going on, having a lot of historical perspective. It, it's why people gain so much from working with you. you. You've been down that road before them. You know what they need to do. Um, things that upset the world, you look at and go, huh, that's happening again, fourth time. But it's <laughs> not right. new. That's right. Where's the opportunity, right? And whenever there's exactly. a problem, there's always an opportunity and you need to be able to. Yeah. I I wish they'd change the tax laws every year. I wish they'd send interest rates through the roof. I wish the market would crash because those are all nothing but good news to someone who knows what they're doing. And for everybody listening and watching this, you know, John did bring up the change in the tax law this year. Make sure you're getting the right advice because there are significant changes when it comes to real estate. You want to take advantage of all of them. And, um, you know, you can't, I don't even, I don't even do my own taxes, even though that's my area of one of my areas of expertise, because it's, ch it's changing so fast. Have the right people helping you, the right mentors, the right tax specialists to make sure you're getting every opportunity available. So it, uh, thank you so much. There was I'm a lot so of happy big, to have you today. Thank you, Sharon. You're going to hang in here. We're going to go into the private Facebook group for a few, a few more minutes, but thanks so much and love to your family. Thank you, Sharon. Same to you. Thank you for listening to this segment of the Play Big Movement podcast. Please subscribe to iTunes and leave us a review, as well as join us in other areas of social media, Twitter, Instagram, and LinkedIn, at Sharon Lecter, and for Facebook, author Sharon Lecter. Thank you so much and have a fabulous day.